up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold penny edgy new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 bmw 530i courtesy of apple bmw in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we are in this one because the 5 series has been completely redesigned for the 2024 model year this is the start of the g60 generation you do get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance which is definitely nice as well and this one is going to be competing with the audi a6 genesis g80 and mercedes-benz e-class so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a couple different configurations for the 530i you got the base sedan starting at fifty seven thousand nine hundred dollars and then you have the x drive sedan starting at sixty thousand two hundred dollars but regardless of the configuration that you go with power plant is going to be the same powering the 530i is a two liter twin power turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 255 horsepower at 4700 rpm 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm that power being sent to rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters and launch control which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit ultimately zero to 60 time is going to come in at 5.9 seconds for the rear wheel drive 5.8 seconds then for the all-wheel drive top speed 130 miles per hour with mpg nervous coming in at 27 in the city 35 on the highway that's pretty darn impressive considering the size of the 5 series so well done bmw for that but anyways before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the 530i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes and they will include eco pro comfort and sport adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right let's do this acceleration test uh right after we get done with this stop sign here i'm going to go ahead and put it in first gear do have it in sport driving mode and let's pull out onto the road here three two one it's holding the gear that's good go It's pretty quick, but we haven't done that acceleration test yet. Give me a second with that, but there is a slight delay to the paddle shifters, if I'm being honest, which is kind of weird because BMW usually absolutely crushes it with the reactions times when it comes to their paddle shifters. But for whatever reason in the 530i, there is a slight delay. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but to be honest, who's really gonna be using the paddle shifters in a five series anyways? But now let's go ahead and find another straightaway. Let's get back full control to the 530i and let's see how quickly we can get our new 530i here up to speed. Three, two, one, go. There's somebody behind us. Ah! That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. That's plenty of an acceleration. It's nothing crazy, crazy, but that is definitely plenty of an acceleration to merge onto the highway without a doubt. Keep in mind, zero to 60 in six seconds flat is plenty respectable. So yeah, you shouldn't have any issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, you will find four wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard on the 530i, but did want to mention an optional package called the M Sport Professional Package. I guess for $1,050, that does give you larger front rotors and it also gives you either red or blue brake calipers up front as well, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted a little better braking, maybe consider going without brake package but overall as far as braking feel goes it is perfectly fine it's a little bit on the softer side but it's not bad you certainly aren't going to have any issues bringing this thing to a stop but the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars of course and if you were curious if there was an adaptive damping suspension for the 530i there is not that is actually reserved for the i5 so that is its own separate review so maybe i'll get a chance to review that later on down the line but for the 530 even without the adaptive damping suspension i gotta be honest it is absorbing pennsylvania's road to perfections beautifully so even without it it is an incredibly smooth ride here in the bmw bmw you can definitely tell they tuned the suspension for comfort in the 530i and that is a wonderful thing. So even without it, it feels great. So then touching on steering feel, I will say it's a little bit looser than I expected, but it's not bad. It definitely feels right for the 530i. One of the best things about steering this thing is the massive, absolutely massive 
10 and 2 grips in this 5 Series, and that is something BMW always tends to do with their vehicles, and I absolutely love it. Not only that, we got a hexagonal steering wheel. How freaking unique is that? So I absolutely love that part of it, but wouldn't have minded if BMW made a little heavier of a steering feel for the 530i. As far as cabin noise goes, it is a luxury car after all. I'm going 20 some miles per hour right now. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin, so that is perfectly at bay, so no issues there as well. Take a look at visibility or take a look out of my rear view mirror. I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back, so definitely not gonna have any issues there. Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the 5 Series, as as well so in terms of forward visibility whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so it's just one less thing you got to worry about it's kind of like automatic headlights so you gotta love that and there is a head-up display available with an executive package that goes for four thousand four hundred fifty dollars and also a premium package for around twenty five hundred dollars so if you wanted that head-up display that's going to project your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield so again assisting with forward visibility and that is pretty darn cool but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new, completely redesigned 2024 BMW 530i. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 BMW 530i finished in Phytonic Blue Metallic. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name, I think it looks pretty darn good on this one. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the 530i is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the new 5 Series is built and assembled in Germany, specifically the engulfing Germany. So, in case you guys are curious about that, but anyways, it is completely redesigned for 2024, like I said at the beginning of the video. Up front, you will find a BMW Active Kidney front grille, of course, but there is a cool option for this year. I don't remember seeing in the past. That's an iconic glow kidney grille, so essentially the exterior is going to be lit up in LEDs. That goes for $500 in case you were interested in that, but I think that's a pretty cool option. I saw that on the website, but we don't have it, unfortunately. But LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard, of course, and you get the automatic feature with that along with automatic high beams as well so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there there is uh, an executive package that gives you the quartering function for those headlights as well so if you're going around the bend at night the headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or whatever the case so that is a pretty cool safety feature in itself. There are some front air curtains found to the quarters there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics, of course. And another thing I always like with BMWs, they usually do a pretty good job with this, are the hood creases and how they kind of form around that BMW emblem up front there. So I think that's pretty cool, but the grille is definitely different than I'm used to seeing on other BMWs. More of a modern look, I guess you could say. But let me know what you guys think of the redesign in the comments, but that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the new 5 Series, silver window surrounds do come standard. But one of the coolest things about the silver window surrounds, let me get up a little closer here for you guys, because this is definitely different. You got a nice big old 5 there on the C pillar, just so you guys know it's the 5 Series. So that is a nice little identifier. I think it's pretty unique, and I like that idea that BMW did that with the new 5 Series. But you do have some flush door handles, you guys can see that, so they don't actually protrude out. Um, making for better aerodynamics, of course. Body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turret signals then as well. I think I definitely like the look of them because the silver from the window surrounds kind of continues onto the bottom portion of that mirror. So it's kind of like it's sitting on a shard of silver or something. So it's a pretty cool design there. Geometric design on the side skirts. Let me get up a little bit closer for you guys because I know you probably can't see it from where it was there and that is what i'm talking about so another nice little design cue that is new for the 5 series for 2024 so what do you guys think of that i actually like it i think it's a cool design but what is this thing right here there's like a little opening on the bottom portion of the side skirts let me know in the comments what you guys think that is so that is definitely quite interesting but nonetheless let's go ahead and touch on the wheels real quick 19 inch silver alloys do come standard on the 5 series but there of course are 19 inch and 20 inch designs available we do have a 20 inch optional wheel design I think it looks pretty dang good on the 5 Series, if I'm being honest. It matches the silver window surrounds very well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the 5 Series, all the way to the top, you will find kind of a body-colored shark fin antenna, I guess you could call it. 
Anyway, center high mount stop lamp does come standard as well. You will find LED taillights with a newer slim design. I think they look pretty darn good back there as well. You do have some like the video and subscribe badging. You guys can see it. It's just above the taillights there. So anyways, I've been doing new car reviews for approximately nine years now, which means I'm getting old. So if you are into new car reviews, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. I would definitely greatly appreciate it. And then just below it all, you will actually find dual exhaust outlets. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. I'll try to get some B-roll, but they are tucked away. They're not incorporated into the rear bumper which i would personally prefer but anyways they are tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip It's been out since we are around to the back of the 530. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, it actually is a power trunk, believe it or not, which is pretty darn cool. There is a button on the key fob. There's a button kind of on the driver's side door, and there's a rubberized button, of course, on the trunk itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there are some levers found in the trunk itself, so you can actually fold down those rear seats for a good bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are some cargo, some added cargo space in the back corners there. There's LED cargo lighting. You don't always find the LEDs in the cargo area, so I'd like to mention that. Grocery bag hooks, it's a pretty massive too. Two grocery bag hooks in that cargo area. It's always pretty cool. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire, which I love, but you actually get the best of both worlds. You do get in-floor storage just in front of that spare tire as well, which I didn't expect to see. So well done, BMW. But so then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at an even 37 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there, but I did like the rear seats you kind of curve into them they're kind of like molded rear seats to a certain extent so i liked that there is rear ventilation of course there is a rear center armrest with cup holders you got a couple usb charging ports just below that rear ventilation as well and if you wanted to go super fancy there is that executive package that goes for four thousand four hundred fifty dollars that gives you a power rear sunshade and power side window sunshades as well which is pretty darn cool but then make your way up to the front seats power adjustable front seats do come standard a veganza leatherette does come standard why does everyone name their leatherette seats these days i don't know that's pretty cold though but merino leather goes for two thousand four hundred fifty dollars if you wanted that heated front seats with the convenience package it goes for seven hundred and fifty dollars there is a luxury seating package by the way that goes for thirteen hundred and fifty dollars that gives you ventilated front seats and massaging front seats actually as well and by the way we do have memory settings as well i don't want to forget to mention that overall seating was pretty darn good you do have the vertical seams which is nice the headrests were plenty comfortable as well the power lumbar i wish it adjusted a little bit more i feel like it didn't adjust as much as some of the other vehicles that i test out but having said that i was able to find my perfect driving position so no issues there but then take a look at the steering wheel one of my favorite parts of the new 530 it is tilt and telescoping of course it is power adjustable as well it is leather wrapped it is hexagonal which is freaky and it's pretty darn cool and the 10 2 grips again are absolutely massive and you can actually get a heated steering wheel if you were to go with either the convenience package or the premium package so that is there for you as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup but let me start by actually showing you guys the key you got your bmw logo on the one side which by the way is the lock button in case anybody didn't know on the side of the key you got unlock and that button to pop the power trunk there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start and there is a remote start by the way for 300 dollars. i don't want to forget to mention that but in this case all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of our glass turn dial knob cool we'll get more into that in the interior quality but anyways once started up you will find a full digital gauge cluster that comes standard and of course it is completely customizable specifically when you change the drive mode so there's that personal drive mode there's a a sport mode where it completely changes everything to kind of red hues there's efficient where it turns everything kind of blue like a water hue i really like that one that's probably my favorite honestly but what i'm getting at is there's a bunch of different modes that completely change the look of the gauge cluster which i personally love if you're going to have gauges have them be completely customizable to really tailor the vehicle to your own liking and of course everything is on there that you could possibly want you have how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's a digital speedometer speed limit recognition outside temperature so you can't ask for really anything more than this particular gauge cluster that we have with us here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the interior quality power moonroof does come standard however there is a sky lounge roof that goes for six hundred dollars you probably have seen that in other bmws but that is pretty stinking cool glass controls come with the exact 
of the package if you wanted that. There is a wireless phone charger located just in front of the cup holders here. And of course, multicolor ambient lighting, which I actually didn't even turn on yet. So let me go ahead and turn that on real quick. All right, so I set it up for blue since we had the blue exterior. I think it looks pretty darn good. But anyways, there is actually a lot on this infotainment screen. Pretty much everything is on this infotainment screen that you can adjust, including the heated steering wheel button, the heated seat buttons, the climate control settings, and of course your radio information as well. So let's touch on that a little bit. 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system does come standard, but there is an optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system that we do happen to have today. So I did want to mention it, but that goes for $950. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I gotta stop. Dude, this sound system makes me wanna cry. That is how incredibly insane it is. Like, you get a sound system like this. Maybe I'm just an emo kid, I don't know, but you get a sound system like this. It doesn't make you wanna get out of the car. It doesn't make you wanna turn off the car ever. Like, that was incredible. Bowers and Wilkins, I have always said, like my top two sound systems, they're between the ELS Studio sound system that Acura has and any Bowers and Wilkins sound system. That could be in a Volvo, it could be in a BMW. Bowers and Wilkins just crushes it. It makes you feel like you're in a concert. The clarity was insane. The bass was just perfect. You could feel it in your chest. That was a brilliant sound system. Definitely my top three. I would say ELS Studio is number one, uh, Bowers and Wilkins and the Volvo S90, and then this one. Because, And keep in mind, I've tested nearly 900 cars at this point, so to be top three for sound systems, that is wonderful. That was an incredible sound system. I'm going to keep saying it. If you like music, this is where it's at for sure. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the 530i in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but you're also going to get that panoramic view monitor found a little screen to the right there, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus in 2022, which is the last time the 5 Series was tested, typically vehicles only get better with time in terms of safety from what I've noticed so I'm sure it's going to do perfectly fine when it finally ends up getting tested for this new 530i as well but disclaimer hasn't been tested yet but front side side current airbags do come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard forward collision mitigation with left turn warning mitigation and left turn assist as well blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert front pedestrian detection traffic sign recognition lane keep assist and lane departure warning as well so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I'm still not sure what I think of the exterior design. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'm curious, really kind of curious what everyone thinks of the design here. But anyways, great interior quality. You can't deny that. One of my favorite sound systems without a doubt. If you like music, you're going to absolutely love the Bowers and Wilkins sound system in the 5 Series. I'll put it that way. I do love the hexagonal steering wheel and the 10 and 2 grips are absolutely mammoth. So that is another thing that I absolutely love as well. As far as room for improvement goes, I'll give a couple things here. Previous years, the ambient lighting was much more pronounced in, uh, in BMWs, but for whatever reason, it's more subtle in this particular new 5 Series. I wouldn't have minded if they uh, illuminated everything a little bit brighter. I turned the brightness all the way up, by the way. It's just, it's not as bright as it used to be. I'll just put it that way. And the other thing is there is a good bit of options available for the 5 Series, and that could be a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it really does allow you to personalize the vehicle, but on the flip side, it can get pricey pretty darn quick because of the number of options that are available so i'll just put it that way but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new five series in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold